So Ravens were watching the film of the Steelers game and they were looking at Tredavious White and said, hold up, we just traded for him. He was a former All-Pro cornerback, but he was out there in L.A. with the Rams left for dead. They didn't think he was nothing. He was on the inactive list. He wasn't doing anything over there. But we brought him to Baltimore and he went and showed out like that against them Steelers. Oh, you know what? Let's double down and let's go get somebody else who's out there in free agency right now, left for dead, and ain't nobody really checking for him. Let's bring his career back to the forefront. Team, keep it clean. The Baltimore Ravens have signed yet another former all-pro cornerback to the squad, literally because he's signed up to the practice squad, that being Desmond King. We're going to talk about it shortly. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on, and leave a like on the video, and let's get into it. So let's read this article from BaltimoreRavens.com so we can get sort of an overview on this signing, what it means, what it could mean, what he could bring to the Baltimore Ravens. Here we go. Said the Ravens signed veteran defensive back Desmond King to their practice squad. King, who's 29 years old. I, I thought he was a little bit older than that, but he's 29 years old. He was released by the Houston Texans last week. Now in his ninth season, so a lot of experience there, and he's made it a long time in the NFL because the average NFL lifespan, I think it's like three years. So him tripling that, Good stuff, especially at the cornerback position. But anyway, now in his ninth season, King was a first-team All-Pro in his second season back in 2018, so Lamar Jackson's rookie year, uh, with the Los Angeles Chargers. He had played in just one game this season and seven last season with the Texans after he was released midway through the season by the Pittsburgh Steelers, who he played three games for last year. So recently, he ain't really been playing too much. But anyway, continuing, it says, King has long been a scrappy and versatile player who has a nose for the football and can impact the game in multiple ways. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine career interceptions and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half career sacks, along with 35 passes defense. King started his career playing mostly at nickel corner, where he thrived his first couple of seasons, but spent more time at outside corner back in 2021 and 2022 while in Houston. The Texans switched him back to nickel last season. So what that tells me. Because when they first signed him, when I first saw this announcement a couple hours ago, I was like, oh, okay, they signed in a nickel corner, so he's going to be an inside guy. Uh, but he has the ability to play outside, but they don't really need much outside help. They have that in a Nate Wiggins. They have that uh, in a Tredavious White. They have that in a Marlon Humphrey if they choose. But this gives them that much more flexibility just in case, but certainly at inside corner, at nickel corner, at slot corner, that's where... He, Desmond King, can come into play. But anyway, we'll continue that in a little bit. He says he could give the Ravens more secondary depth, particularly at nickel cornerback with Arthur Millett sidelined by a calf injury suffered last week. Head coach John Harbaugh said Monday that he doesn't expect Millett to go on injury reserve at this point, so we'll just have to see how it heals. Yeah, Harbaugh did say that. We talked about that in uh, yesterday's video. Harbaugh said, oh, yeah, Arthur Millett, he ain't going to be going to injury reserve, but it is possible Maybe things changed. Maybe Arthur Millette's injury was a little worse than they initially feared. Maybe, maybe, because them signing Desmond King, that kind of lets us know, like, mm, I don't know. but they, at the same time, they did release. Uh, well, we'll get into that shortly. It says Marlon Humphrey took the majority uh, of the Ravens' nickel snaps against the Steelers on Sunday in Pittsburgh with Kyle Hamilton and Ardarius Washington, now the starting deeper safeties. Oh, yeah, we love that. We love that. We love what the defense did. Anyway, it says, in a corresponding move, the Ravens released undrafted rookie cornerback Ryan Bump Cooper Jr. from the practice squad. Cooper played in one game for the Ravens this season. So what this move lets me know, especially when you think about all the experience that a Desmond King has, um, I think this is a sort of stay ready so you don't have to get ready type of move. Uh, TJ Tampa, injury reserve, Arthur Millett out for now we'll know more about him as this week continues because the Baltimore Ravens will be practicing tomorrow so we'll see if he's on the practice field or not I would think not especially how John Harbaugh been talking about him but we won't know till we know but I, I think this is a move to where it's like all right we could be without Arthur Millett a little bit we ain't got to sign this guy to the active roster but we may use a couple of call-ups because remember if you're on a practice squad you have three call-ups so you can be called up to the active roster three times, and then after that third time, uh, they have to actually put you on the active roster, or they can release you, and if you clear waivers, they can sign you back to the practice squad, um, or somebody else could sign you at that point, too. So I, I think they just wanted to have him ready, just in case Arthur Millette 
is not ready to go. So now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you'd like to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to y'all, by the way. You can send it directly on Patreon. If you'd like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. My goodness, my email is flooded. I thought it was flooded yesterday, then it got even more flooded today. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy, but y'all are a good type of crazy, and I love y'all. Let's get into these questions. First one came from my guy Terrence. He said, so the O-line was overrated. Now, before we get to his question, it's funny because I remember he asked a couple of months ago. I think it was, I want to say it was after the, it was either two games, within two games after the Cowboys game, I believe, where he talked about the offensive line, how he ain't really feel like they were all that and whatnot. And I said, well, they've been improving. They've been improving. They've been looking better and whatnot. But he said that they were not as good as they seemed. But anyway, he said it. We've got quite the sample size now. The O-line is not good against elite talent. The playoffs are going to go the same way this game did if we can't figure out how to score consistently against those teams. So, yeah, um, that's a problem. The offensive line has been an issue uh, a lot of times this year, like you mentioned, against elite talent. Um, every time we go against elite talent on defensive line, we lose those games. What's crazy is not just because of that elite talent that we lose those games. It'd be a bunch of other stuff, too. But that certainly plays a part. Uh, again, we lost the Chiefs, Chris Jones, Carl Loftus, the Raiders, Max Crosby. Oh, goodness. That dude is a game record straight up, man. Um, the Browns, Miles Garrett, and now the Steelers, TJ Watt. Preston Smith, I mean, Highsmith ain't even played yesterday. Um, Cam Haywood, he made his impact. No, so they got some guys. And then Patrick Queen as a pass rusher. So they, um, the Ravens got to figure this thing out, man. But again, with them losing to those teams, it wasn't all about the offense, but it was a lot of other stuff that played. But the offensive line still, uh, it was an issue a lot of times. And yeah, when you go against the best of the best, and if you ain't good enough, it's going to show. So while the Ravens offensive line has gotten technically better than where they started at, they still got some strides that they can make. They still got a little roster move over here that they can make. Like they could do some shuffling like they did with the safeties. But I don't anticipate them changing anything with the offensive line because like a lot of people have brought out um, with uh, Joe D, I I'm sure, and I was just talking to one of my guys about this last week, or actually the week before last, and he brought up how it seems like they really want to honor Joe D's word and honor what his request was, honor what he saw with this offensive line. I said, oh my goodness, that is such a great point. Because it is. It really is. So maybe that's why they really, really sticking with these guys on the offensive line. Uh, but let's hope that they can continue to get even better. They got some work to do. But hey, we see what the defense did last week. Stuff can be turned around, whether it takes a little bit of roster shuffling or not. This offensive line, they can get even better. So let's hope they get as good as it takes for the Ravens to not only get to, but get through the Super Bowl. Next question came from my guy Israel. And speaking of Super Bowl, he said, hey, hope all is well with you and the family. And I pray everyone else is well. I just want to see what our record and how it is. It scares me. We have ups and downs. Uh, and I just want to say 2013, February 3rd, which is my birthday, we went to the Super Bowl and we won. Uh, we were scary 8-8, eight and eight, third in the division, and we made it with Flacco, playoff massacre. As long as we get to the big game, I trust Lamar, I trust King Henry, Pat, etc. And with the way our defense played, I strongly believe we can win it. Cinderella story, it's not always pretty. Uh, what do you think about that? I know it's more games, but with a so-so record, we can make it. Uh, and I don't care about Lamar's MV3. We know who we got. We need that bowl like Lamar wants most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still want Lamar to get an MVP, too. I want him to get both, both. Regular season MVP and Super Bowl MVP. And both of those things are very, very doable. But, yeah, Ravens can make it happen for sure. I know a lot of Ravens fans are like, oh, I don't see it right now. And with the Ravens still continuing their same struggles, not being able to get over the Chiefs and not playing good against the Steelers, hey, it, it, it looks very, very bleak. But this season, like, you literally have an opportunity to conquer both of those feats because you play the Steelers again. And, hey, who knows? Who knows? Obviously, you got to get there first, but you may see them again in the playoffs. And then if you want to get to where your ultimate goal is, you ain't got no choice but to go against some Kansas City Chiefs. Next question came from Jay. He said, what the heck is going on with Derrick Henry snap count in the last four games? We've played all three of our divisional opponents in these past weeks, and all of these games were highly contested. Uh, the common denominator is that I'm seeing Henry's role is drastically being reduced in those games. Every game he does not get the ball at least 20 times leads to 
a nail biting outcome every single game in which we don't win more times than not. His yards per carry has not dipped below four this season, so I'm heavily convinced the Ravens are shelving him and limiting his role in these games. He was well on pace for 2,000 rushing yards, and now that's a mere impossibility with him having to get roughly 150 rushing yards for the next six games. Why are the coaching staff overthinking this? We signed him on a discount just to not use him in critical situations. Don't get me started with the goofiness Todd Monk and loves to pull at the goal line by having either Lamar or Derek subbed out on particular plays for it to end in disaster. I have lost all patience with this coaching staff, and we might have to see major turnover if this team fails in January. I go hard for my Capricorns on this team. Derek actually shares the same birthday as me, and Lamar is three days afterwards. If we mess around and don't respond well to the L.A. Ravens, oops, I mean L.A. Chargers come next week. Then that seat for John will be scorching hot. No, it won't, my friend. <laughs> let me let you know right there, it is not going to be hot at all. Now, I do expect the Ravens to take care of business against John's brother, Jim, and them charges. But re regardless of what happens, John Harbaugh's seat will not be hot. John Harbaugh is never going anywhere unless he chooses to go somewhere. John Harbaugh is never getting fired. He, he not. Ravens are not going to ever fire John Harbaugh. I know back in 2018... It was close. It was like, oh, they're going to mutually part ways. And da, da, da. How about I ain't going nowhere? They have continuously let us know, gave us reminders, gave him extensions like, hey, Harbaugh, you're safe. You're good. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Even in times, in, in years past, in, in seasons where he should have been let go. But he ain't going nowhere, so don't count on it. Now, as far as Derrick Henry, um, you look at this last game, I know a lot of people, oh, he ain't getting no touches in the fourth quarter. But context is super, super important with that. Um, because he did have touches, but they kept getting called back. They kept getting called back, and then Ravens, they kept getting in first and long situations and whatnot. Penalties just kept killing the Ravens. They kept messing everything up literally all game long. It was one of the most frustrating things to watch. So, But there have been other games where Derrick Henry sort of fades out. If He fades away, and they stop using him. So that is a big issue because you want to keep him going. You want to keep him getting involved. You want to keep giving him the handoffs because Derrick Henry, as we know, he's one of those guys. You just keep feeding him, and then he's he going to give you results uh, eventually. Sometimes it's a little earlier. Sometimes it's a little later, but they're going to come regardless. Next question came from Real Raw Reckless. He said, what's up, man? Great the team. Keep it clean. Hope everyone is blessed. Justin Tucker has been the most accurate kicker in the NFL for the past decade, but he has struggled a lot lately. What type of legacy will he leave behind if he continues to struggle and possibly work his way out of the most accurate kicker in football? He's already out of that. He already lost that title um, to, I think, Panthers kicker, I want to say. So Justin Tucker is not... Uh, technically the most accurate kicker in the NFL anymore. So that's gone. Anyway, uh, he said, and how long should the Ravens stick with him if he continues to struggle? On a good note, I think we have found our solution on defense. Big up, Tredavious White. Hey, there we go. Shout out to him. Um, but with Justin Tucker, yeah, because I, I still don't know what it is. I still don't know what it is. I don't know if it's Jordan Stout. I don't know if it's actually Justin Tucker. But whatever it is, like, you would hope that the Ravens would get it fixed this season. But if if it is a Justin Tucker issue, if he is the real problem, then ooh, I don't know how the contract situation is, but you got to make a big decision this offseason, my friends. Next question came from my guy, Reese. He said, my raw reaction to the Steelers game, praying you, your family, and channel continues to do well. Appreciate that, Reese. He said, I may be upset with this L, but at least we saw an incredible effort from the defense. That's true. Steelers couldn't get in the end zone in their home field. Unfortunately, once again, we found other ways to lose. Tucker's missed field goals. And penalties. Let's hope this defensive trend wasn't an anomaly and we can turn the tables. I agree. Uh, he said, sad that Williams and Jackson lost their roles, but it seems like it lit a fire to the rest of the defense. That's true. Because if you see somebody, especially it's a big money somebody, and they lose their job, then that could make you look like, hold up, I ain't getting paid much. So they could definitely be looking at me. Let me tighten up. So that's a good point. He said, Pittsburgh still has to play a ton of division games. We're not out of this divisional race yet. I agree. He said, we have a tough gauntlet of games after the bye. Three games within 10 days, so they have some time to iron some issues out. I think they can build from this L. Let the defense continue to gain confidence. Can't expect Lamar to throw three-plus touchdowns every game. The penalties, Tucker's field goals, I don't know. My question, are you optimistic about this team? Sorry for the rant, but I'm really, he, he put really missed off. But he, we know what he meant. Anyway, um, <laughs> a little typo that kept it clean. Look at, look at your computer working for you. Anyway, um, yes, I, I still do believe this is Baltimore Ravens. These 2024 Ravens, at the end of this season, will be holding up that Lombardi trophy. As, as crazy as it sounds to some people, as crazy as these Baltimore Ravens be looking with their inconsistencies, with their issues, I still believe that they will get it all hammered out and worked out. So on February 9th, 2025... Lamar will have yet another MVP, but it's going to be one that he ain't had before. 
Next question came from my guy Jonathan. He said, "How you doing, Engraver? I'm doing good, busy but good." He said, "Hope you in the family well." My name is Jonathan, but I go by Johnny. No Bravo. Oh, I like that. Shout out to Cartoon Network. Anyway, he said, "Sorry for the long-winded question, but um, why was Derrick Henry not in the game on a two-point try? Because the play that they ran, I didn't see no receiver on the side that Lamar ran to. Well, Nelson Aguilar was over there, and so was Isaiah Likely, but they were, they were too busy arguing about where to line up at. Mark Andrews was out there, but he was like, "I don't know what's going on out here." Tylen Wallace, he ran to the other side. Justice Hill ran to the other side. It was just the, the play was a mess. Um, anyway, he said, uh, I feel like Tylen should have gotten the ball. Probably would have scored too, but why not Derrick Henry? Best running back in the league at 30. Shaking my head. It gets worse. Praying that Tuck goes back to being automatic because two crucial field goals that we needed to stay in the game. And shout out to the defense. They definitely look like last year. Liked what I'm seeing. Yeah, with the Ravens, they, with Derrick Henry, just the threat of him alone, that would have bought the Ravens an extra second or an extra two seconds. And that's some, that's a lot of time during a play. Because just the threat, because they had a two-point conversion where they had him out there, and they faked it to him, and the defense bit. I think it was, was against the, it was against the Bengals, yeah, where they faked it to Derrick Henry. The, a lot of Bengals went for Derrick Henry, but Lamar kept it, so he ran, and he's got it. So um, they didn't even have Derrick Henry out there, even as a distraction, a decoy, nothing. They just It was just a sloppy play from beginning to end. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, I had a feeling we were going to lose this game. Open and drive, Henry fumbles, Tucker misses two field goals, likely fumbles before half to give the Steelers a chance to score, and then the OC calls a QB sneak for a two-point conversion. Defense gave up some big plays, but they finally came to play unlike the offense. Still costly penalties and not having the king in for that two-point conversion gave me Kansas City Chiefs AFC Championship game vibes. Well, yeah, that's, Lamar said the exact same thing. He said, we got we to gotta stop losing this way. So hopefully, like, after this season, like on February 10th, you know, and all guys simply when he make all, the, all those fire edits, when he makes an edit after, on February 10th, because February 9th, we got to be watching it. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to give my guy simply a couple days to recover because I know he's going to be celebrating heavy after the Ravens win the Super Bowl. We all are. But um, so I'm going to give him, like, February 13th, 14th around. And when he makes his edit about the Ravens season, I hope he includes that clip of Lamar Jackson saying that, like, we got to stop beating ourselves this way. We got to stop losing like this. And that can be like, oh, man, Lamar said that. And it was at that point that the Baltimore Ravens, they finally stopped beating themselves the same way. And they just started beating everybody and they won the Super Bowl. Anyway, he said, um, we need a true number one receiver like a DK. And I love what I saw out of uh, Tredavious White. Might need to give him some of Steven snaps. I do agree. Now, as far as the true number one, as far as a build and a jump ball guy, we ain't going to get that this season. So can't even worry about it this season. Ain't even no point, in my opinion, to talk about it this season because it ain't happening this season. Because that their receivers are set. They are who they are, so they got to work with that. Um, but, yeah, I do agree. Next year, they should get a receiver that compliments Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman like that. Uh, he also said, when it comes to building the team as far as free agents, re-signing players, and trades, is it all EDC, or does he need approval from Steve Bishotti first? Steve just, hey, Steve said, look, do what you got to do. That's, ED, that's EDC and John Harbaugh. Uh, EDC, he's the one that signs the players. John Harbaugh is his vision. Is the, or actually their vision together on what kind of team they want to build. So that goes to both of them. He also said it's time for a new voice at head coach. I'm tired of him saying, who has it better than us? When clearly a lot of teams do. I haven't heard him say that in a while. I, I really haven't. Maybe I missed it, but I don't know. One thing that I was thinking about, and I've been thinking about it since even before the Steelers game, and I know the Steelers game didn't help it, but I've been thinking about, man, when we come on here, we talk about the Baltimore Ravens. We talk about what we, we think they should do. We talk about what they need to do. We talk about all these suggestions for the Baltimore Ravens to make them a better team, better, better organization, winning organization. I am very grateful to be a Ravens fan. Now, I'm not, like, giving them a pass for stuff. I'm not, like, um, settling or anything like that, but... When you think about it, like, think about a team like the Jets. Think about the questions that they may have. Like, oh, man, like, we, we asking questions. We, we sitting there, what, seven and four? And we asking questions how this team could get better. And they have a lot of ways that they can get better. But we think in AFC Championship. We think in Super Bowl. We think in playoffs and all that. Think about, think about a team like the Jets right now, what they going through. They literally firing everybody right now. Think about a team like the Panthers, what they going through. And it's, it's ugly. You think about a team like the, the Bears. Well, yeah, the Bears, what they've been going through. for the, And a lot of these teams have been going through this, this stuff for the longest. Ravens might have an off year here or there. But usually, they are a pretty competitive team. And a team, especially recently, where you can mention Super Bowl and it can sound realistic to people. But So I, I am very grateful to be a fan of the Baltimore Ravens. Now, um, yeah, they still do have their flaws, of course. And they still got a lot that they can improve on. But I'm very glad not to be in a situation like a lot of those other fan bases. Anyway, he also said, last one for the night. But I watched how Josh Allen took over the game with his legs instead of waiting on his receivers. I've seen numerous of times where Lamar will have a wide field and he stays and waits for someone to get open. And it either causes an incomplete, uh, an incompletion or a wild scramble for a throwaway play. Lamar has to take what they give him and just run the ball. He has the speed to outrun anybody. He does. And it's, it's all situational, man. All situational stuff, man. It all just depends because there will be times, there have been times when, hey, it's like, Lamar, take off, take off, run, 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 go, 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 go. 
but he waiting for somebody to come open. Maybe he sees something. He like he anticipates something. He like, oh, this receiver about to come open. Let me wait, 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 wait. Because if I run, I can get a chunk of yards. But at the same time, if I throw it to them, I can get even more yards downfield. So I think it all just depends. It's, it's, it's easier said than done, especially from where we at right now. But that, that's how I feel about that. He also said I, he watched the nightcap and Unk made a great point in my opinion. That point was we have to feed the king. King get getting under the 15 to 20 carries is not the recipe for us winning games unless we down three scores and need points fast if you look at the teams that have beaten us we don't involve derrick henry i guess sometimes the run game don't be working but that doesn't mean we need to shy away from it hmm now that's an interesting point right there we talked about earlier with derrick henry somebody you just got to keep feeding over and over and over and over and over and over um but you did say if the run game is not working then we shouldn't be going away from it hmm you sure that's where it's tricky because if it ain't working and if something ain't working, wouldn't you want the Ravens to stop it? Just a little something to think about. Anyway, he said, you might already get this question before you get to mine, but with the recent move of free safety, is there a chance we see our young studs play like Sanusi Kane and Bo Braid? Well, we got to see what Sanusi Kane's injury is first. I know he got hurt in that Steelers game, so let's see what's happening with him. Uh, he said, will Marcus Williams be cut or traded this offseason with the cap hit? Mm, I think they're going to try to trade him. I think they're going to try to get him out of there. Um, and if not traded, then because I, I just think they're done. In my opinion, I ain't heard nothing, don't know nothing. Y'all know I'm an NFL outsider. No sources, no plugs, no connects. But I think they're done. I think that's a wrap with Marcus Williams with the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe they use them sparingly here and there. But I think they just maybe to just, just take the loss and maybe we'll try to facilitate a trade to where the other team could take some of his cap hit or whatnot. But I, I think Ravens are done. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, what's up, Engraven? It's your boy Raven Pride. What a game it was with them Steelers. I was so impressed with our pass defense. I gave it an A minus, but not for JT. I feel right now, Hobbs uh, and EDC need to add a kicker right now if we're going to be in situations like this again. Love you, bro. Love the team. Keep it clean. Family. Well, <laughs> we appreciate that, but I don't think you're going to love what John Harbaugh said yesterday because he said they are not bringing in any competition for Justin Tucker. He said he just hoped he got to get it right. He got to start kicking those straight. So that's that. Next question came from my guy TJ. He said, God bless the family, the channel, and our Ravens. All I got to say is let me know when they win the Super Bowl. I'm out like Harbaugh and EDC need to be. You talk about consistency. My, my guy, he's been saying that for a long time. And I, I disagree with him with EDC. Um, that with Harbaugh, there have been times when I have agreed with him. Like right now, though, right now where we are, right here, right now, obviously Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. And everything, in my opinion, with what should or should not happen in Harbaugh, it yet again depends on how this season ends. Everything depends on how the season ends. Anything during the season, no, throw it out the window, don't even worry about it. But I, everything depends on how this season ends. In my opinion, there are absolutely no excuses. Last year, there were absolutely no excuses. There were none. This year, there's still no excuses. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Well, I'll talk about that after the season. But I right, know on February 9th, February 10th, the post-game thoughts on February 10th. Ooh, ooh, I can't wait for it to go down. Oh, yeah. Anyway, he said, Harbaugh and EDC have literally wasted Lamar Jackson. I truly feel in my purple rain heart. If Ozzy the Great was still GM, Lamar Jackson would have a Super Bowl, maybe multiple Super Bowls. Uh, he's way too good, man, for how Harbaugh and EDC just keep wasting him every year. Um, you sure about that? Because if Ozzy was still GM, um, I think stuff like the Dez Bryant signing, um, signings like that, they would happen a bit more often. Uh, now, Ozzy did his thing too, but a wide receiver, that, mm, mm, nope, that was not his forte. And Eric DeCosta, he's, um, he definitely has some struggles there, but he's done a lot better job of Ozzy Newsom at that particular position. Um, do you feel like uh, they did get a Super Bowl? So there's that. So you can't, like, that's the highest, I feel like that's the highest thing that you can have in an argument when it comes to quarterbacks. But do you think the Ravens got the most out of Joe Flacco? They got a Super Bowl. But as a quarterback, do you think they got the most out of Joe Flacco? That's like a hard question because the Super Bowl is what's, what, what matters. Because even if a quarterback ain't even that good, ain't even all that, if you get a Super Bowl, it's like, oh, okay, hey, it don't even matter if they got the most out of him. But um, back to uh, Lamar Jackson, I, I just, if he was under Ozzie Newsom, Ozzie Newsom obviously, obviously made the pick. Eric DeCosta was in the room too, but, but um, I just, I can't say I agree with that. But anyway, he said, uh, we wasted him every year. He's the best thing we've had since Ray Lewis. A Reed, he says, oh, sadly, he plays offense, and the GMs and head coaches don't seem to realize that. And it's sad. EDC hasn't given us one championship since he took over, and Harbaugh just needs to go. Who's got it better than us? Everybody. But it's just sickening. <laughs> this guy. He also said, when the offense dominates, the defense disappears. When the, off when the defense shows out, the offense disappears. How you the head coach and can't figure out what's going on? It's you. Now, what I will say, was Harbaugh out there fumbling a the ball? 
Did he make Isaiah Likely and uh, Derrick Henry fumble the ball? No. Did Harbaugh make Justin Tucker miss those two kicks? No. Did Harbaugh get all them penalties uh, on the offensive line and then some on defense? No. I mean, I, I know with the penalty part, you could be like, oh, he should be coaching that. That's a coaching thing. So I, I could get that. But at the same time, while Harbaugh does have his big responsibility for the Baltimore Ravens, and if we want to talk about this game particularly, Yes, but the two-point conversion was my biggest issue with Harbaugh in this game because, again, he showed his hand. Mike Tomlin called a timeout, and they came out and ran the same thing, and it was just sloppy. They know where to line up at. It, it just looked bad from the very beginning. But there's so many things that happened in this game where Harbaugh, he should not get the blame for it.